These days, the price of the 3D printer came down quite a lot, and more people started having their own 3D printer at home. I also recently bought one for myself, and I was very excited to use it. However, when I started using the 3D printer, after a while my wife told me her throat is becoming quite irritated and she started having runny nose. So I stopped printing and ventilated there. After a few hours, she gradually became better. After some googling, I could find some other people also had a similar symptom since they had started using 3D printer. This concerned me of course about the potential health issue. And I really don't know what will happen after long term exposure to the plastic film. So I decided to make an enclosure that keeps outside air clean with negative pressure technique. If you have a similar concern, I think this video might help you to build an enclosure for your safety. In this video, I'm going to explain what negative pressure means first, then I'll show you the steps to build the enclosure. So what does negative pressure mean? The negative pressure is not actually the pressure lower than vacuum pressure. The term negative pressure is used to describe the isolation technique to prevent cross-contamination from one region to another by using pressure difference. A simple example of using this technique is bathroom. When you close the door of the bathroom, the fan keeps ventilating the air out of the room, creating the negative pressure compared to your living room. So all those bath smell is designed to be contained inside the bathroom keeping the outside free of smell. However, this technique can only work when enough pressure difference is maintained between the room and the outside. So if you open the bathroom door, for example, since there is a large inlet, enough pressure difference cannot be maintained. This means the bath smell can escape to your living room, which is not very desired. So keeping the size of the inlet relatively small is critical to use this technique. This picture shows the simplified design of enclosure I'm going to build. It has a large outlet with a ventilation fan and a small inlet that allows the fresh air into the enclosure and thus, at the same time maintain the enough pressure difference between inside and outside of the enclosure. Even if there is a little gap around the enclosure, as long as enough pressure difference is maintained, the air always flows into the enclosure. I started looking to find material to build the such enclosure on IKEA website, and I found this affordable kitchen cabinet for the size I want. The size of my CL10 mini was around 19 by 20 by 20 inches, so this cabinet was good size for me. I also bought this IKEA cabinet shelf to use it as a top cover of my enclosure, and this coffee lap table to put it underneath so that the enclosure is not too low from the ground. This is how it looks like after assembling the IKEA cabinet with a leg table underneath. I installed one of the shelves as high as possible to make it as a top cover of the enclosure, and my CRT Mini fit perfectly inside. The back panel of the cabinet had a little square holes, so I coupled them with a piece of cardboard. I wanted to have the controller of the CRT Mini outside of the cabinet, so I made a little hole to route the wire from the controller to inside of the cabinet. I also got this transparent acrylic panel from the local retailer, and this will be the front door. In order to seal the gap between the cabinet and the front door, I bought this rubber window seal from Home Depot. I attached this seal on top and side edges of the cabinet except the bottom edge, because I wanted to have the small inlet for the air to go in from the bottom. I also found these uh, L-shaped metal pieces in my home and screwed them at the bottom edge of the cabinet to support the acrylic panel. I installed them such that they can pull the front door toward the rubber seal to create the tight ceiling. You can see the rubber seal at the bottom is squeezed as the acrylic panel forms 90 degrees from the ground. To make very simple way to hold the door, I used some screws on the side and use the elastic shoelaces and clip in order to hold the front door to the cabinet. This is how to open the door. And this is how to close it.
Now it's time to cut the exhaust hole on the top cover of the cabinet. I used 4 inch hole saw to cut out with circular shape. And this is how it looks like after installing. I purchased this 4 inch inline fan from Amazon and dry air transition duct from Home Depot. I also needed a joint between the top cover and the duct, so I used this. Empty soda bottle. I cut the soda bottle to make a cylinder shape first, then use scissors to make some support to the cabinet. Since the diameter of the soda bottle was slightly larger than 4 inch tall, I had to cut it and adjust the size and fixed it with the tape which came along with CRT Mini. Then I attached it with the fan and duct like this. My room has an awning window, so I had to find a way to install the duct somehow. I got this white hardwood panel from Home Depot to block the window and also got this duct to wall connector as well. I didn't use soda bottle for this because I want this connector to be stronger, so I just purchased it. I probably could have print one with my 3D printer. I cut the hardwood to fit to my window and made a 4 inch hole with a hole saw. Then I installed the female piece of the connector to the hardwood panel and male part of the connector to the duct. And I secured it to the window. I attached the duct to the fan and taped it. This is how it looks like after installing them. Ideally, when there is such a sharp 90 degree angle, the airflow speed decreases because of friction. But as long as the fan is strong enough to maintain the negative pressure inside of the enclosure, I think it's okay. I'll probably try to improve duct design in the future video. I used two screws to install a filament spool holder on the top of the cabinet. And I made a little hole to route the filament to the 3D printer inside the cabinet. Now we are almost done. I bought this LED spotlight from IKEA and thermal mirror from Home Depot. And I installed them in the enclosure. This is how the completed enclosure looks like with LED on. Before I run the 3D printer with this enclosure, I wanted to check if the pressure inside the cabinet is actually lower than the outside so that the air can only go into the cabinet not the other way around. So I did a little test with smoke and this is the result. You can see as the smoke gets closer to the front panel, the smoke is bent toward the gap, not the other way around. So I think this is the proof that negative pressure is created. Now I can finally print some stuff. After I built this enclosure, I have used my 3D printer for a few hours without telling my wife. I know it's a little mean, but I wanted to remove any placebo effect. And you know what? My wife didn't even notice I was running 3D printer for several hours. And I also haven't smelled any plastic film from 3D printing. So I feel much more comfortable using 3D printer now. I hope this video helps you build a 3D printer enclosure. And thanks a lot for watching. And if you have any questions, please leave a comment below. And I would be happy to answer as much as I can. Then I'll see you guys in the next video.